You've got to see just how simple it really is to solder SMT, that surface mount technology, chips and PCBs. So let's learn together. And in the process, we're going to create and build this Commodore 64 Ghostbusters cartridge. Who are you going to call? Well, retro recipes, of course. <laughs> Welcome. Hello Chip Dippers, and this week you really are Chip Dippers, as we're going to be soldering chips and dip sockets to our PCBs, with thanks to PCB Way. Now as you may know, I've been out of action with man flu, but as always, I never want to leave you without a weekly video, so here this is. And at least I've got my voice back now. now. Yeah, I was quite hoarse, but now I'm much more stable. <laughs> Now, there are two versions of this Ghostbusters cartridge, which, as you know, if you watched my Christmas video recreating my Ghostbusters Commodore 64 bedroom setup, is my favorite and most nostalgic game by far. Now, for the PCBs, there's this version available on PCB Way, which uses through hole chips and is pretty easy for anyone to solder, even as a starter project. But there's also this version that you could also have made at Bishibiwe, which was kindly donated a few months ago by Andreas Hecker, and we unboxed it on The Retro Show. Please keep your channel going for many years to come. Your community and I love you for it exactly the way it is, with all the joys and the little jokes. Aww. Greetings also to your beautiful and wonderful wife, Lady Fractic. Happy Fractic. And of course, your four-legged friends. Who are you going to call? Perry Fractic. She liked that when you said that. It's designed by Oliver W and uses surface mount tech. Now, up until now, I've only ever worked with through-hole technology, which is basically bigger and easier to solder, because that's what almost all the old computers that I'd repair used. And I'd always been a bit scared, if I'm honest, of fiddly, tiny SMT, and didn't understand what tools you needed for it, and so on and so forth. But we're going to completely demystify it right now. So let's start by looking at the gear we're using. And you can get links to all of this in the video description. So first up, we've got our Hacko soldering iron. We may not even need it at all for SMT, but we will need it for that big chips socket. And then this is the wonderful Hacko desoldering gun. I love this thing so much. Uh, you've seen me use it in several videos and it is it just works magic for removing solder from solder joints. It has an easy remove chamber here to remove all your solder from, and you can quickly swap out the tips for different sizes with a handy tip removal tool. And then this is a brand new purchase, and this is what I got when I realized I'm not afraid of SMT. This is the... You were... You were... Yeah, sorry, I've still got a cold. 959D. Uh, it was basically just the best recommended one on Amazon. It's around 60 bucks. I figured how complex can it be to blow hot air? I mean, I do it every week after all. You pick this up, it automatically starts the fan, and now it's now blowing hot air at us at the temperature uh, shown on here. And you can turn up the fan speed. You don't want it too fast, so you'll end up blowing your solder all around the PCB. And you can turn up and down your temperature. That's in Fahrenheit, and it's got three presets there. This should automatically turn off, and the fan is turned off. And that's it, folks. I've got some other accoutrements, but really this is the basics of what you need. Now, I mentioned SMT is fiddly, and that's why I've got this. It is from Hand on Star, and if you hadn't guessed, it's a microscope. And you adjust your microscope focus here, and it goes up to a staggering 4K. Now, you don't need something this flash, of course, although I will put the link in the description, but any kind of microscope will do. And in fact, even the humble iPhone has a magnifier option there where you can actually get some really good close-ups of stuff using the various lenses. And you can just set that up in front of your work uh, on a little stand. And that should do the job fairly equally well too. And then I have this. This is an extractor fan. Again, fairly optional, but you know, just for your health, you may want to suck all those solder fumes away from where you work. They come in this way through this charcoal filter and the clean air goes out through the fan right there. And this is actually my biggest fan. And as for consumables, this is the key to working with SMT. <laughs> but this is solder paste. It's self-cleaning, which usually means it has alcohol and flux in there. You might be wondering what flux is. It's not going to help you time travel, but this is a flux pen. 
And flux essentially helps with cleaning and preparing the PCB. It gets rid of any impurities and makes the solder bond much, much better. You may see some solders say they contain rosin as well, which uh, is actually from, I think it's pine tree sap, and it's basically another solvent and bonding agent. I have my little roll of solder here if I need some regular solder, but we're gonna be trying to mainly just use the paste. But this is with a rosin core again. You will also notice that some of my solder is leaded, and uh, I do that by choice. You can get lead free, of course, but I find the leaded stuff, it just looks better, it melts better, it ends up shinier. Just always clean your hands. I wash and scrub uh, and use a nail cleaner under my fingernails, <laughs> these are toenails, <laughs> under my fingernails. That would be weird soldering. So that I get all the lead out because the way you get lead poisoning is by getting it on your hand and then touching your mouth or eating food, that kind of thing. It's not so much from breathing it in, but again, We've got this as a backup as well. So there it is, that is everything we need. Now, let's start soldering. And to help us, PCB Way have sent us some very cool things. And for practicing, we're gonna use this. It's actually a measurements chart that tells you, you know, what kind of component you have just by lining it up there. But we can use it as a little practice run before we get to work on this, which is the Ghostbusters cartridge kit itself. So throwing that under the microscope, and let's choose a suitable candidate. Let's go with this guy, shall we? So first I'm gonna get my flux pen and uh, just get a bit of flux going on the board. You can see the bubbles fizzing away and you can see it cleaning the impurities away there. Next thing I'm gonna get is my solder paste. Put the plunger in the back there and I'm gonna apply just a very small amount onto those pads. That may even be too much, but we'll see. And now I'm picking up my solder rework station gun. You can see the flux coming out and bubbling. You want to always keep the end of the gun at least two millimeters from the PCB to avoid damaging anything. There we go. I think we've tinned everything. But of course, it's never gonna be perfect first time round. We've got a problem. We've got two bubbles. And that simply means that we've put too much paste on there. There's two ways to get this off. Firstly, we can use this. This is solder wick. So for this, I've grabbed my soldering iron. Then you're just gonna place and push down on top of that solder. And it will be absorbed and sucked, hopefully, into that wick. There you go. You can just kind of wipe it across. Add a tiny bit of a bridge this is known as a bridge here, so we don't want that because that's going to short circuit those two pads. There you go. Now it's not the most beautiful soldering job because I'm brand new to this, just like you. For that second bubble, handily, as if by magic we had two bubbles, I'm going to show you the desoldering gun method. So simply place that on the bubble. Suck. <laughs> and it's not too bad. So final step, you can use the flux pen again or you can just use this, some isopropyl alcohol. Three quick sprays, and then you can use this. This is an anti-static cleaning tool, just to clean up. And look how beautiful that looks now. And now the exciting bit, we get to play with the actual kit. So I actually provided this. This is a dip socket. It stands for dual inline package. There's the chip for our dip. So we're going to use these together so that we can actually remove the chip later and put in different games into this cartridge. And these are our two oh so tiny chips. Look at that in my hand. And that's, that's just the box. There's the other guy. Now this is a type of digital logic chip known as an octal D-type flip-flop. And it has eight flip-flops inside it. And each flip-flop can store a single bit of data, so zero or a one. And you can use this chip to store eight bits of data temporarily. And of course, Commodore 64 being an eight-bit computer, that's where it stores its data from the ROM. You could almost say it's a type of RAM. And this guy is known as a quad two input NOR gate. It basically manages the signals from the cartridge that go between the cartridge and the C64. And finally, looks like a couple of stickers to probably go on our chippy chip. Nice. Now to the PCB itself. Start with flux pen. Clean up. 
Next we get our paste and we know now to use even less this time. Very interesting. Well, I think it's always important to show successes as well as failures. Let's watch that again. And what it tells me is we have the temperature too high and the fan too high. So there was a little air pocket or something inside there and it basically bubbled and exploded. So let's try again. We've still got our pads are actually quite well tinned. I think these three at the, these three at the end are not. And that also means we can try it without the flux pen this time as well. Tiniest dab on there. See, and that's much more successful, isn't it? Too much on this one though. Will it spread across to these ones that have too little? Yeah, I'm pretty confident that they are all now nicely tinned. It's a learning process. And look, actually some of our solder rolled across to the other end there. But let's just finish up with those ones. Again, teeny tiny amount now. And the magic you're seeing happen is all down to the surface tension and the attractive qualities of the solder to the pads. Make sure that final pad has enough on it. See how it's only partially tinned there? But again, this one has too much. So let's just try and push it across. There you go. So it is interesting. Those three pads don't seem to want to heat. Maybe I was too stingy in the solder paste department. Yeah, it really is a Goldilocks situation. Uh, not too much, not too little, and not too hot. Next step is the scary bit, it's getting the chips on there. This is pin number one as indicated by the dot, so we know we need to align our chip that way around. And pin number one will always be indicated by the groove. Now we can test the continuity to make sure all of the pins are making contact with the PCB. Everything making contact. There you go. Now for the next chip, which is the really tiny one, let's try a bit of a different method. We're gonna mix things up, literally, I suppose, with the solder paste. And I'm gonna put the solder paste on raw, then drop the chip on top of it, and then try heating the paste around the pins. I mean, if we're lucky, we might see a bit of magic happen involving that surface tension, which should pull the chip into alignment with the pads. Let's try it out. All right, very nice. And one thing you can notice is compared to the previous chip, there's a lot more solder coating over the top of the pins. And being a beginner, I think I again used a little too much, which explains those solder bubbles. But the final result is what matters, and I think it looks good. I don't think there's even any need to test the continuity. Now, what some might say is the easy bit, and that's putting in this dip socket here. For that, we very simply drop it into the holes. There you go. I wonder if we can use solder paste again here, instead of soldering each pin individually. It is satisfying, isn't it, when it works? 
And I'm just going to finish off with a little bit of solder, old-fashioned way. So what we want to do here is heat both the pad and the pin, and then dab our solder in there. Yeah, I'd have to say I don't recommend using solder paste in a rework station for pins, only for SMD. Let's just do the rest the old-fashioned way, using the soldering iron. There you go. With all that done, we'll give it a nice rinse. Wash any trace bits of solder off there. That will all evaporate. And there it is, one Ghostbusters cartridge covered in alcohol. Or is it ectoplasm? Let's go find out. Oh wait, I forgot to put the chip in. <laughs> Very gently ease those into position. And now we're ready to bust some ghosts. Ectoplasm. All right, so now we've created our board. Let's go and see if it works or if there's any ghosts in the machine. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I thought this was just going to be the game. Better computer graphics than the movie. promising and those are the infamous loading stripes for those who watched that recent video of mine Ghostbusters! <laughs> <laughs> there it is lovely uh, now fun fact the voice that says Ghostbusters as you can hear now Ghostbusters! well David Crane who wrote the game actually told me that this was his prodigy named Adam Bellin who he sent off to electronic speech systems to record all the speech and how cool is it that those exact zeros and ones he recorded on that day are now encoded on this cartridge that we just soldered. And there it is, our fully working, not so scary, Ghostbusters SMT cartridge. Links for all the gear are in the video description. As always, huge thanks to PCBWay and everyone who made this video possible. I hope it at least has made you a little less scared of soldering SMT or SMD stuff, even if you are still afraid of ghosts. Thanks for watching, subscribe and support below, and cheerio.